today's episode of Design to the Nines, we're going to be making a Pinterest inspired giant oversized farmhouse style sign with the help of Cricut who is sponsoring this video. So let's get started. So I love looking at Pinterest along with the rest of the world and I have noticed all of these massive farmhouse kind of rustic signs that are kind of blacks and whites and have like rust spots on them and they are so great. I love them but they're pretty expensive. So with the help of my Cricut machine we can do that for a fraction of the cost but we're going to have to take a quick hop outside to get this project started so I'll meet you out there. I'm braving some heat and humidity here in Florida to do this project, <laughs> but we'll be okay. So here's my piece right here that we're gonna be making the sign out of. You can't even see me now because it's such a big sign. This is 24 inches by 48 inches. This is just a scrap piece left over. I think it might be like the last of my scraps from my craft table build. Now you'll notice that it's kind of Thin. So I want to build a frame for that. Now you could just use like a three quarter inch plywood piece, but I think that this is actually a little bit better because it, it will be a little lighter in the end. We're gonna make it look beefier by taking one of these, I think this is called like common boards. It's like a one by two. And they do sell something similar to this for a dollar for an eight foot piece. It's really rough and warped a lot of the times. This one's a $2. I recommend spending the extra dollar these are typically much straighter, less knots, less roughness. So this is um, a better way to go. I have two of them. This should be good for the top and bottom. And then we need another one for the sides. So we're just going to go ahead and cut this on my miter saw just because it's going to make it a much faster process. But you don't need that. You could use a circular saw, jigsaw, or even like a miter box, like a hand saw, if that's what you have, because these are pretty easy cut. I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to use this miter saw in this episode because I've done it on other episodes but basically we need to cut these down to size to build a frame essentially or a backer for our piece of wood so we're gonna measure we're gonna cut the side panels first and that's 24 inches so then we're just gonna measure 24 inches make our mark if we can find our pencil there it is <laughs> There we go. All right, before we make our cut, we gotta make sure we put on our safety glasses to protect our eyes. And if you wanna wear a face mask, feel free to do that. I'm in open air and I feel okay about cut making these simple cuts without one. But I always recommend wearing one, if, especially if you have any issues with your lungs. So before we cut the top pieces, I'm gonna place our side pieces so we can know exactly how to measure them. So we're just gonna line these up, make sure they're gonna work. Now we can measure it. And we have 45 and an eighth. And we'll make that cut. All right, so normally I would finish building this outside, but I will admit I'm being kind of a wimp and it's a little hot outside. <laughs> so I just decided to bring it inside and we are just gonna assemble this together. And I'm gonna use some little clamps to hold it in place while we take our electric staple gun, which actually also has a brad nail feature on it, which is perfect for what we're doing. It's really simple to use. And what's really nice about it is you just squeeze a trigger instead of having to swing a hammer and nails and maybe hit your fingers. <laughs> we're going to start out by laying out our frame how we cut it and placing our large piece of wood on top because we will be driving our brad nails from the front side. Once everything is nicely lined up and clamped into place make sure you hold your electric brad nailer firmly into place and pull the trigger placing many nails all the way around. All right, so we've got the frame on the back so it's much sturdier. And then, you can't see me? No, you can't. 
peek of it. Just kidding. We are ready to just get this all painted up and then work on our stencil. Now you could choose to fill these nail holes if you wanted to, but due to the rustic nature of this sign, I didn't feel like it was necessary. Then I just take some leftover white oops paint that I already had on hand and painted the whole thing white. Now it's time to design our sign. And for that, we need to go into Cricut Design Studio. Now I will be using my Cricut Explore Air 2 to make this sign, but you could definitely use a Cricut Maker as well. I just had my Maker set up for something else and I just didn't want to mess around with it this time. So this part of the project is where your creativity comes into play. I know that I wanted to put the Callahan family established in 2007 on the sign. So I start out with the and put that in Times New Roman. I approximately place this in the center, but we're gonna be messing around with it, so we don't really need to be exact at this point. Then I typed our last name, Callahan, and I ultimately decided to go with Rostilla for the font. Now we need to play around with the font to re really give it a very custom look. So all we do is we're gonna go in and click the drop down menu under advanced, and then we click ungroup letters. This way we can treat each letter separately, changing the size and the placement. I make the largest letter, which is the C, and then I'm gonna leave all the A's the same size, and then I'm gonna increase the size of the L's H and N, and then I'm just gonna place them where I like as I go. Then when I'm happy with the way it looks, for convenience purposes, we are going to go ahead and highlight all of the letters in my last name and attach them together. That way we can just move it around and adjust it as we need. Now we need to make lines for either side of the word, the, and family. And we do this by clicking on the square shape. And then on the bottom left hand corner, there's a little lock. We're going to unlock so that we can make it into not a square, but we can turn it into a line. Before I could get the lines correct, I needed to make sure I was happy with the way Callahan looked. And I decided that I wasn't, and I wanted to widen it a bit and stretch it out. And you can do it the same way you would do it with a shape, which is unlocking it on the bottom left-hand corner. Then you can make it taller or wider and stretch it out however you want. Getting the lines right actually took me quite a bit of time, but ultimately what you need to do is to get the line where you want it in width and thickness. And then you're gonna take another square, go just larger than the size of the word, and then you're gonna set that square on top over the line where the word will sit. Then you're gonna highlight everything and then we're gonna hit the slice button. Now we can get rid of that middle excess by highlighting it and hitting the red X. Now you have the perfect spot for your word to fit in. Keep playing around with it until you're happy with the way it looks. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do in order to create a stencil is to highlight the entire image and hit weld. Because our sign is going to need to be very large, we need to separate it into four individual stencils. We do this by putting four rectangles that fit on a 12 by 24 inch mat behind the image that ends up being 11 and a half by 23 and a half and highlighting each rectangle and hitting the slice button until you have four equal stencils. Then we can hit make it and make sure that it's set to the correct mat size and vinyl settings. And now we're gonna cut out our vinyl on our Cricut Explore Air 2. I believe this is the best machine for most DIYers and crafters. It has so much versatility. It can cut over 100 materials, cuts everything from paper to iron on vinyl and bonded fabric and the removable vinyl that we are using today. I'm always surprised how much I use it and if you like to decorate and craft, it really does pay for itself over time. So once we have our vinyl on our green mat, then we are ready to load it into the machine by hitting the arrow buttons and then we hit C for cut or Cricut. We will do this four more times for each section.
Now, I might have done something wrong here, so if you have any suggestions for this next part, let me know. But because it was so large, we needed to slice it into the four sections. And because it won't cut up to the edge, we have a little strip of vinyl that we don't need in between each section. So I used a straight edge blade to cut this part off, but thinking back, I probably could have just easily cut it off with scissors or done something to make it cut along those letter edges. So if you have an idea or know how to do this, let me know in the comment section below. Then we just weed out what we don't want and apply transfer tape and make sure you rub the transfer tape onto the vinyl securely. Then we just peel back our vinyl lettering and apply it to our wood canvas. Now I start in the center to make sure that the words and everything are nice and centered. Once we've got it applied, we are ready to go outside and spray paint. But I've got a little trick that I wanna show you that may take you by surprise. So we need our sign to be rustic looking. We are going to spray paint it in this flat black spray paint. And then I'm gonna make it look a little rusty and I'm gonna do that by using some cinnamon. I know, hopefully it makes it smell good after everything dries. <laughs> I don't know, but rust kind of has this color right here. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle this on as I spray paint. If I don't like something, I'll spray a little bit over it to kind of even it out. And so you'll just have to kind of watch what I'm doing. I've never done this before, but I'm hoping that it works and we'll see how it goes. All right, I gotta be honest right now, I'm feeling a little bit nervous about the cinnamon and the spray paint. I'm hopeful, but I just don't know. <laughs> so we're gonna let this dry. This is the thing with DIYing. I've never used this technique before, so it's kind of fun to try things new. Now that it's dry, we are going to peel off the vinyl and expose our white lettering. When I see the results, I am very pleased. There were a couple of spots where I didn't get the vinyl lettering quite matched up perfectly, but that's okay. I just go back in with a paintbrush and hit it with that original white paint. Now to seal the cinnamon, just so it doesn't flake everywhere, I spray it with a flat clear coat. I really didn't feel like a shiny polyurethane would have worked for this sign. Now even with this clear coat, you can still smell the cinnamon, which is awesome in my opinion. Before we can hang it, we need to put some hooks on and I simply just screw those into the back of the frame and now it's time to hang. I hope this project inspires you and shows you just how easy it is to use a Cricut to make amazing artwork and home decor. I have less than $10 in supplies on this project due to the scrap wood. If you are gonna go out and buy this sign in similar dimensions, you can expect to pay between two and $300 easy. Or you could just take that money and buy a Cricut Explore Air 2 and be able to use it to make this project and so many others. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. Don't forget to check out all of Cricut's amazing offerings. I'll put a link in the description box below. And to all of my DIY Niners, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.